Hello everybody! Welcome back. My name is Jessica. The topic of today's video is a review of this book, Bone Crossed by Patricia Briggs. Bone Cross was written by Patricia Briggs. It was published by Orbit in 2009. I purchased this book from Thrift Books this year because I have most of the Mercy Thompson collection and this was the only one that I was missing. <clears throat> I decided to read it because, as you're well aware if you've been watching my videos, I am reading the Mercy Thompson series and this is book number four in the series. <clears throat> Patricia Briggs is an American author who lives in Montana. She has degrees in history and German from Montana State University, and she was a substitute teacher, but now she writes full time. Let me read you the book blurb. Welcome to Patricia Briggs World, a place where witches, vampires, werewolves, and shapeshifters live beside ordinary people. It takes a very unusual woman to call it home and there is no one quite like Mercy Thompson. By day, Mercy is a car mechanic in the sprawling tri-cities of eastern Washington. By night, she explores her preternatural side. As a shapeshifter with some unique talents, Mercy has often found herself having to maintain a tenuous harmony between the human and the not-so-human. This time, she may get more than she bargained for. Mercilia, the local vampire queen, has learned that Mercy crossed her by, whoa, son. <laughs> wow, that sun just came right out from a cloud there. Whoa. Now you know I'm not a vampire because I didn't just burn up. Anyway, Mercilia, the local vampire queen, has learned that Mercy crossed her by slaying a, num a member of her clan and she's out for blood. But since Mercy is protected from direct reprisal by the werewolf pack and her close relationship with his sexy, sexy alpha, it won't be Mercy's blood Mercilia is after, it'll be her friends. It's not a super thrilling synopsis there. It kind of didn't draw me in very well. The majority of it is just describing Mercy and the universe, which if you're reading the series and you're on book four, you already know. And then the last paragraph that actually describes what the book is about is just not that enticing because if Mercilia is going after Mercy's friends, all of Mercy's friends are supernatural and can defend themselves quite easily. So it didn't set me up super well. <laughs> I do love the cover. Blue is my absolute favorite color. Like if I could paint everything in my life blue, I would. Um, so I love the cover. It's gorgeous. But as the synopsis described, this is about Mercy dealing with Mercilia's need to get revenge on her for killing a couple of her vampires. And it is a split story. So along with this Mercilia storyline, Mercy is contacted by one of her friends from college because her friend has a ghost in her house and it's affecting her child. And so she is asking Mercy to come to visit her in, I believe it's Seattle, um, to deal with this ghost situation because she knows that Mercy can see ghosts. And so Mercy's like, well, I'll escape Mercilia for a while if I go visit her. So she goes to this friend's house to deal with the ghost problem and so the story is split between that storyline with her friend and the ghost and the storyline of the pack, the wolf pack of the werewolves that she lives next door to, um, dealing with Mercilia wanting to get revenge on Mercy. And honestly it didn't work very well. It felt like Patricia Briggs maybe had written these as short stories initially. And then to make it to a full novel length, she had to add a lot of filler. <laughs> and the connection between the two storylines was pretty tenuous and flimsy. Um, this book is not long, it was about 300 pages. But when I say filler, there was a lot of unnecessary filler. For example, son. Can we deal with this sun? It's cloudy out, but like every now and again, 
a cloud will break and then the sun shines in. <laughs> okay, I think we're, I think we're back under a cloud now. We're getting there. Ah. Um, what was I even saying? Okay, filler. For example, in one entire chapter, it is just Mercy going through her friend's house in Seattle and describing the rooms of her friend's house at length. And it's like she's doing this because she's trying to get a feel for where the ghost might be or what might be attached to this ghost and this haunting. And it would work if that description of the house came into play later, but it doesn't. Like, it doesn't matter. It's like an entire chapter describing this woman's house for no reason. None of it comes to play in the plot later. It doesn't involve, like, the ghost going into a secret passageway. It doesn't involve a bad vampire coming to a certain... Like, nothing. Nothing of it matters. And the lot. I'm trying to block this sun with my hand. Is it working? <laughs> uh, so it was a very long, boring chapter, and I mean, I even love houses, and I used to draw interiors when I was a kid to think about how I would design specific houses, like I'm, I'm obsessed with houses and their interiors, but even me, and loving that kind of thing, I didn't love that chapter because it was like, you didn't get the full picture of the interior either. And so it was just like, I checked out this corner, or I checked out this drawer, and there was nothing there, and nothing ghostly going on, and it was just not well done. Um, so that's the kind of filler that I'm talking about that ended up happening in this book to try to stretch it out to the length of a full novel. And again, the connection between the two separate storylines was pretty tenuous. Um, <clears throat> another issue that I'm starting to have with the Mercy Thompson series is that Mercy doesn't have any female friends. She's got all these men in her life, most of them want her, and she doesn't have any female friends. Like, zip. And I was really hopeful that this friend that she was visiting in Seattle would end up being like a long-term character in the series, and that's not going to happen. I won't spoil it for you, but yeah, that's not going to happen. So it's starting to get frustrating to me that it's like, it's Mercy and all these guys who want Mercy and then all of the women characters are either vampires who she's terrified of or other werewolves and the werewolf women are really competitive and they don't like her. Like they see her as a threat, they try to have dominance over her and there's all of these stupid power games that go on between the women. And I don't like what that is saying about women in general. Like I don't want to see any more mean girl play in Mercy Thompson. Like I'd like to see a good solid female friendship develop in the story. So overall, um, I did give this book two stars out of five. One thing that I appreciated was the disability representation. So the friend that she goes to visit has a son who is deaf and it's pretty well represented. Um, you know, she talks about using sign language and communicating with the son effectively and, um, you know, it, I wouldn't say it's like the the best of the best disability representation, but it wasn't cringeworthy either. So there's that. Um, in terms of content warnings, I will give content warnings for sexual assault, kidnapping, and gore. Just in general, it was pretty gory. And for a discussion question, um, share with me down below if you've read a book that has a split storyline that went really well. I think this can be done well. I'm not like a pessimist about dual storylines. I think it can work really, really well. It didn't work in this case, but I think it could work well. So tell me some books you've read where it does work well. And one example that I can give you is, um, Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, where there's two separate points of view in that and these two young women dealing with the death of their father in these different ways in different communities. I thought that was really, really well done. Um, so tell me your examples down below of books you've read that do a good job of having that dual storyline or even like a dual perspective. This will probably be the last video that I post until after Christmas. So if I don't see you until then, if you celebrate Christmas, please have a wonderful holiday. Stay safe, wear your mask, don't do anything to infect people with Corona. 
<laughs> and until next time, make sure to continue to read good books, drink good coffee, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.